So my name is George Hill. Uh, I am I'm a recent graduate of civil engineering at UBC. I'm also a volunteer with Fair Vote Canada and a group uh, called Vote Urban Rural Proportional, and we've been campaigning for this particular system uh, for the past uh, three or four months now. Um, yeah, and that's 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 where I am. I set up a little ballot box at the back there, so you can fold up your ballot nice and tightly and put it in the ballot box. Maybe explain how the uh, only how, how to vote? Yeah. yeah. So, how to vote, You, it's really, really simple. All you do is you put a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, and so on, on the person that you would like to have elected in that order. So, it's, let's say that your first choice is Jane Thornthwaite, and you would put a 1 beside her name. And then maybe your second choice is Bonwin Ma, so you put a 2 beside her name. Um, just make sure that you don't mark two people with first, so you can't put both of them as your first choice. You have to choose one as your first choice. And also don't skip a ranking. So don't go one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, because, uh, yeah, that will make it, you know, well, what's your third choice? Yes, question. Um, do we just vote for the candidates that are in our area? I see there's different areas of North Bay Lonsdale. It is completely up to you. You can vote by the area, you can vote by party, you can vote completely by the candidate, and whether you like the candidate or not, it's totally up to you. You can put as many rankings on the ballot as you like, or you can put as few rankings on the ballot as you like. You can put just a one, and you can leave it at that, and that will still count. Or you can rank all 16, and that will still count. It's, it's, uh, it's a very diverse ballot, so you can choose However, however you want to fill it out, you, that's what you can do. There are no rules other than the no repeats and don't skip a number. Yeah, and so, some, uh, some of the political questions let me answer. Uh, if you are a diehard liberal, you can choose all the liberals that you like in order and leave everything else empty. If you are a diehard uh, NDP, do the same thing. If you are, if you want to choose, you, you you think that some of the candidates of green are also legitimate and would work for what you want, then put them in any order that you like. So, um, and also a, a good point that you have to pay attention to. Let's assume that you are a liberal, and your second choice is uh, green. Okay, you have two options. One is that just vote for liberals. The other option is, in that case your votes for liberals will be enforcing as many people who are liberal to the, to the uh, you know, legislative assembly. Uh, and uh, if, you, if you leave everything else empty, then you are not participating in the rest of the uh, election. So that's your choice. For you, it will be a first past the post. But those other people who decide to fill in the rest of the vote, let's say if you like that if uh, uh, the liberal candidate couldn't go to the, you know, let's say the fourth liberal candidate that you are voting for didn't get the, the enough vote. Then your green vote will be counted. If you so you will help a green person to go. Otherwise, you can leave it empty, and then you are not helping any green person. The same is for a person who is green. If you are green, you can just p vote for green uh, and leave the, the rest empty. But I would suggest you feel, you know, uh, the rest of your preferences such that if your last green candidate, which is most likely wouldn't get, you know, not all of your green candidates may get the enough vote. So feel the liberal candidates or NDP candidates that you think are preferred after your green candidate. That will help your power, like your electoral or voting power, to be transferred to the second person or second party that you are interested in. However, if you basically, there are people who have promised to themselves that they will, you know, they have told their mother that they will never move from first past the post, then do so. Just vote for the first party that you like for and this ballot will work for you as a first past the post. So that, so that covers off the, the first column, candidate name, and the second column, affiliation. What, what about the local area? That's Just for your if information. I in, if I live in uh, uh, North Vancouver Seymour, 
um, and I put West Vancouver Sea to Sky as number one. So well, you put the name, you put the, you rank the person, but that person belongs to that area and belongs to that party. So, so you, it, it's important to recognize with 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 with, uh, with this system, you end up having instead of one member per riding, and you having five ridings, you would end up having one riding that would elect five people, if that makes sense. Yeah, so it you, will make sense. Sir. So, how so about you, there, there is a, there's a local beside the name. So if you are really concerned about your local politics, you are absolutely, you can look on the ballot and see, oh, I can see all these four people are from what, from like Lynn Valley, and I could rank them one, two, three, four, five, if I really like my local candidates. So the, the little affiliation, the party affiliation and the, and the where they're from is only just to indicate a little bit more information to you about where these people are from, mm -hmm. if, that, if, if, if that helps. You mean we are not limited to the area. place that we live? Yes. Okay. So it would be one North Shore riding electing five MLAs to the provincial legislature. Okay, I want you to trust me, and nothing can hurt you. Just, just put them in order that you like them, whatever is your preference, and then you will see the result at the end. And this whole, the next hour, you will learn what is going to happen. But by ranking what you prefer, it's called preferential ballot. By ranking your preferences, nothing wrong can happen to you, especially today. Because none of these guys are going to the parliament, okay? <laughs> just write your name. So just while we're waiting, the, this ranked ballot table, imagine each column like this is like one of your ballots here. So you can see that in this person, ranked Frida first, ranked Bill second, ranked Amy fourth, and, and Saul third. And you can see all of the different persons that are... Elected. This example, this small example that I'm showing you, you can actually, uh, if you look up STV sample election, this is a this is a, a sample election that the citizens the citizens assembly in 2009 did for the referendum, and this is an example of how they demonstrated how STV works and the transferring of votes. Um, and they did the same kind of thing that Dr. Amir was talking about with grouping the ballot, number of ballots of like similar ballots into like one category. So here we have, assuming that 800 people voted in this particular fashion. So um, now a lot of this stuff is kind of, you don't have to understand, but what, what, what you should notice here is that when we count up everyone's first choice, because that's the first thing that we're going to look at. And we're going to say, how many votes did free to get for her first as a first choice? So we, we go and we look at the table and we say, okay, so this ballot received a first vote and this one received a first vote. So that's 800 plus 700. And that means that Frida received 1,500 votes in round one. Then we're going to look at Bill. Bill only had one person. 750 votes. So you can see he had 750 first place votes. And so on for the rest. Now, we're going to look at these numbers here and we're going to say, okay, Frida is our obvious winner. From If we were doing a first past the post election, you would be electing Frida only. This is, this is an example. This is an example. I'll, I, will show you, I will show you your ballots in a sec. This is the simple one. So now we say, well, the quota here, we have 5,000 ballots, and we have five candidates. So calculating our quota is 1,250 plus one. So we see here that Frida has met that quota. She is above the quota. And so what we do is we say that she has in excess 249 votes above the quota that she doesn't need to be elected. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take all of the 1,500 votes for Frida, 
and we're going to look at who her second choice candidate is. So we say, okay, second choice for Frida, we see in this ballot is Bill. 800 people wanted Bill for their second choice, and 700 people wanted Saul for their second choice. Yes? Sorry, how does the quota calculate again? Because so that's 5,000 divided by 4 plus 1. No, no, three plus three people are selected, right? Three. Oh, yes. Three. So three, three plus three one is four. Five thousand oh, okay. divided by four plus one. Sorry, oh, yeah, I that probably should have. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, in our election, we're going to be electing five people, but for here, we're going to elect three people. Um, so yeah, eight hundred people chose Bill, and seven hundred people chose uh, Saul. Now we can't just transfer eight hundred and seven hundred votes because that would be unfair. Uh, that would ruin everyone else's choices. So we have to proportionize those results. So we say that 800 and 700, we say that 800 over 1,500, so that percentage of votes that chose Bill as their second choice is about just over 50%. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you have 800 of the total 1,500 people who voted for Three to first wanted bills their second choice, which is just over 50%. So we take that percentage, we multiply it by that, that excess votes. And that means that Bill is going to get 133 votes here, 133 votes in a vote transfer that's going to go on to their next choice. And in the same, in the same way, Saul is going to get 116 votes because he was a little bit less than 50%. So if this was 750 and this was 750, then these two numbers would be the same, if that makes any sense. And they both add to 249. They do, they both add to 249. And you'll see, so here, now we're at round two, round two. And so we say, okay, has anyone met the quota? No, that means they didn't get enough votes to get elected. So what we have to do is we have to eliminate someone from the process. So we have to say, well, Bill, sadly, even though he was the second choice of Frida, did not receive more votes than any other person. So we eliminate him from the race. Now, in eliminating him, we need to transfer the votes of his second choice. So we look, we come back over to Bill. Now we say... Bill here, the first choice of people who voted for Bill, all of them were 750 people voted Bill at their second choice as Saul. Now because all of his votes are eliminated and nothing helped to elect him, we're going to transfer all of his votes to the next person. So we say 833 votes are going to get transferred to Saul here. And we see that Saul, 833 plus 916 will give us 1,799, and we move on to the next round. And in the same way that Frida had her votes transferred when she was elected, because we noticed that 1,799 is greater than the quota. She was, and uh, Saul becomes the second person to be elected. And in the same thing, this is uh, fairly methodical, right? Who, what, what happens next? Anyone guess? <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what happens here? Which one has the minimum uh, vote to just vote? Saul. Saul, Saul, is vote for some Saul. So Saul, Saul is elected. So Saul has more votes than the quota. So what do we have to do with those votes? Yeah, we got to transfer those to the other Thanks. people. So then we go back to, we look at Saul's we look at Saul's second choice, and we say that Saul, so people who voted for Saul, we see that um, um, yeah, so we have to transfer those excess votes to the next people. And so we're looking at this graph here, and we're seeing that people who voted for Saul you see, this person was the second vote, but Saul's getting eliminated. So we take, we, then we go on to the third votes.
for this person. So we're going, you kind of see we're going up the ballot mm -hmm. as we go on this kind of transfer of votes uh, with that kind of, if they're over the vote, then we take that little, we look at all of the ballots to make sure everyone is included. We take the percentage of people that are over it, and then we move their vote and pass it on to the next person. So instead of every vote will count, you have to say every gram of every vote will count. So yeah. So we look at we look at the numbers, we scroll over, and we get here we can see that more of the votes, more of the people who voted for for Saul and the people who Frida voted for Saul ended up preferring Amy over they did Peter. And Amy then met the threshold and was then elected as our third candidate. And the election is complete. You've elected three people, which is Frida, Amy, and Bill. And you can see that Peter had the next, if there were four candidates, Peter would be the next person elected. Now, so this, do you, do you guys have any questions about this simpler example? Okay, so are you excited to see the results of the actual? Um, I have a little uh, graph for you to show you. You might have to watch kind of carefully. Oh, you're in. This is the transfer in action, right? Yes. So are you noticing that like sometimes the bottom person is being eliminated and the purple distributes across the second choices? Then when the person gets above Excuse me. Yes. The first person if he has the quota will go to the parliament. If he doesn't then we, we remove the last, the least wanted choice, and we distribute the vote of those people who voted that last choice. They are still part of the citizens. So their vote would be distributed, and we do this until one person gets absolute quota. So anyways, this is the animation. And the animation is all colorful, but it doesn't really help you see what happens on your ballot. We can see here, that Dana Moore Taylor, uh, Tristan Andrew Galbraith, Ralph Sultan, Fawn Ma, and Michael Rene Shara were the five people elected in this election. So, um, yes. I want to add something. Just look here. For, just because of the propaganda that is out there. In this system, did we vote for parties at all? No. We voted for people. Mm -hmm. But look what happened in the party domain. We have two people from NDP, one liberal, what is the gray? That's an independent. Independent and the green? That's a, that's a green. The green. So, <laughs> so look, this, although we voted for people, the proportionality goes in the domain of parties as well. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna, whoops, I'm gonna scroll up and I'm gonna look at our table here, and you guys can follow along and see the uh, results as we go. So um, actually, first off, I'm going to show you the ballot table. I counted everyone's vote as, uh, as if you were representing 100 people to make it a bit more interesting with the ballot numbers. So our total number of ballots was three, we had 30 ballots. So that's 3,000 valid ballots if I'm counting each of your votes as like 100 votes. And you can look at your number on the top right and just verify, if you want to verify, that this is indeed correct and the order is correct. And you can see, um, so if I have ballot number 7, I could see that 4, 3, 6, 5, 1, 2 indeed matches what I had on my ballot. If you see anything drastically wrong, you can tell me. Um, now we're going to look at the results. So, round one results. So, what is the quota? The quota is 501. Nice, easy number. So, here we can see that Dana Moore Taylor 
received 500 votes. She is oh so close to meeting that quota, but not quite. Um, but our first, our first, oh, we see Bamu Ma has 900. She's received 900 votes. She has 399 votes. And so uh, if you have Bonwin Ma first, I, I want you to look and see. Uh, if you rank Bonwin Ma first, I want you to look and see who your second choice candidate. And you can see that the second choice is here are being transferred out. And as you go down the list, if you have a pen, you can actually like kind of cross off as you go down. And you can see the vote transfer happening on your own ballot. So 266 for Michael Shabune Shara, 44 to Michelle, and 44 to Mahidi. Um, this is actually telling me that most people who chose Bon Ma first actually had a high preference for choosing an NDP candidate as their second choice. And some chose the Green candidate as their second choice. Um, so she's elected. Then we go on to round two. No one reached the quota. No one reached the quota. So we end up eliminating Richie Warrington. And no one on their ballot gave Richard Warrington a first choice. And so he has zero votes, right? Um, so even if you ranked him maybe third or fourth or fifth, he was eliminated because you didn't rank him first. No one ranked him first. Um, all of his votes are going to be, uh, and there's no votes to transfer. Since he didn't have any votes, he can't transfer any votes. Now what happens, say you ranked Richard Warrington fifth. Um, what happens is that if we were on the fourth ranking, it would actually skip over and transfer to your sixth person. Um, same with Clayton Wellwood, Michael Cambridge, and Jane Ann Thornthway received zero first choice votes. And so they were all eliminated. Michael Markwick was the next person with 44 votes, his votes getting transferred to Ralph Sultan. And we got, uh, it was uh, Jordan, Michael Marwick was eliminated, yeah. May, may I say something? Yeah. Those were liberal here. Your vote was broken. Vote is splitting and a spoiler effect. But don't worry. You, you voted for whatever you wanted, then it is transferred to Ralph Sultan. If Ralph Sultan is not elected, it will be transferred to your next choice. So you freely voted for your liberal candidate, and a liberal candidate will end up to be, according to your preferences, in the... So although the vote of liberals was broken, you still will have a candidate. Uh, next was Michelle. And she was eliminated with 44 votes, going to uh, this. I can't. I can't see it anymore. You can see it transferred. Now Jordan Sturdy was eliminated. He had 100 votes. Votes transferred to. I think this is uh, a liberal candidate. Um, so people who who didn't like. So if you voted for Jordan Sturdy and you liked him, and he was eliminated, your votes went on to Naomi. this. No, Naomi. There you go. Um, then Joshua Johnson, the Green, was eliminated, and his 100 votes went to the Independent and to, I think that's Ralph Sultan here. Then Tristan received six, he's the Independent, he received 600 votes, so um, then his next votes went to Green and to Ralph Sultan. Then Dana Moore Taylor had the excess finally received that one extra vote to get elected, and she was elected. Um, now, you see this number here, this little one? Now, what that means is that by, that, by this point, um, if you ranked Tristan on your sheet, and he was your last ranking, then what happens to your vote if you didn't choose another person after that? It just disappears, right? You, you, You've decided that none of the candidates after that deserve your vote. You don't care, you don't like anyone else on the ballot, and you don't want your vote to go towards anyone else. You think they're equally all bad, but uh, so one vote of so what is it? yeah thirty three votes were lost here. One vote was lost here. You can see a hundred votes were lost here of people. So. 
by filling in your ballot further, less votes are lost. But that's totally a democratic choice that you make by, that's the same thing in first past the post. If you choose to democratically show up to the poll and then not mark anything on your ballot. <laughs> uh, they, they, they do note those. They mark it as spoiled ballots. Um, yep, continuing down, Naomi. And eventually we can see that we have Dana Moore Taylor elected, Michael elected, and Ralph Sultan elected. And I like doing that little, uh, the little graph because I think that shows it better than just looking at the numbers. And I can actually, um, I can actually cause it to go a bit more slowly so that we can look at it in more detail. Right, it's going to give me a little box to say continue to break it before it moves on to the next. So we can see here, this is round one. Bond, what's the, we remember that the, the quota is 500, so Bond will not have has way more than 500. So we can see what's going to happen next. So you saw that. All of her votes got redistributed. Maybe I should slow that down even further, or is that good? No, it's good. good. I think it's good. Okay. Um, someone, eliminated, right? someone was probably eliminated. And the reason you probably didn't see anything was because that person didn't have any votes. <laughs> um, which is why I was kind of confused watching this earlier, saying, like, why isn't it doing anything? It's like, oh, because the person doesn't have any votes to check there. I click on OK. Oh, there we go. Do you see that? Michael Marwick's votes were transferred to Ralph Salson. Then we have... Oh, Michelle was transferred to Mahiti. Jordan was transferred to, to Naomi. Joshua's went to Tristan and Ralph. Oh, uh, Tristan was elected, and his votes went to Dana Mayer Taylor and Ralph Salton. Oh, and Dana Moore's went to a whole bunch of different people, Ralph, Naomi, and Michael. And that's uh, Dana Moore Taylor being elected. And I think we... I don't know, is it Bond? Oh, Clayton Wellwood was eliminated and his votes went to Ralph Salton. Naomi Yanomoto was, il was eliminated. Um, eliminated. Mahini was eliminated. All of her votes went to Michael. And then the last votes went into Ralph Salton. And we have our five people elected. Yeah. I hope this has made it easier to understand and maybe maybe hopefully all of you with your votes got something that you wanted out of this from from your ballot and it was uh, useful to see kind of how the process works and what your what your ballot ends up doing Here's the microphone. here sorry i want to tell you that no one in british columbia has this luxury to see this and it's all thanks to my friend. <laughs> that was unique. Can I claim that nobody has done this? Before? I don't think so. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. Yes. Uh, may I have a few questions? Yes. Is it time? Yes. Yes. Uh, my first question is that when I express these uh, things to my friends. There were some objections. Uh, may I have those objections? Then, then uh, get your answers. Sure. First one was uh, this ambiguity regarding uh, the letters, the mails that they have received, that this is going to go to legislature later. So if you are going to change it, maybe the legislature is in the hands of the NDP, so they can change it, and it is not completely revealed. Is it real or not? So uh, they're, they, the auditor, auditor general, auditor general produced a report that detailed all of the decisions that had to, that have to be made after the election and all the decisions that were made before the election. And what they they will do is they'll look at the results of the referendum and they will say uh, that they need to sit down and they have an all party committee 
that I think was going to include, I think it was 10 people, and it was going to be four, five NDP, four, four liberals, and one green. I think, and it was an all-party committee that they were going to have to make those decisions after. Yeah, maybe oh, you. There are three more objections. Uh, the second one was that, uh, one uh, one of my friends told me that okay now at the moment with the current system, I know for example uh, Mr X in West Vancouver, but when is it is going to this system, it will be diluted. So uh, maybe the person from Richmond can have more votes for their uh, representative than mine in the West Vancouver. So my representative can be lost. Is it true or not? It is true for the MMP and the DMP. But not for the RUP. No, for this one, you vote for the person. And you vote for the person that is the combination of the three jurisdictions that are combined. But if they will be all areas will be collected. So in this case... There is no all areas. There is no, it's not on the back. Oh, so it is not... Yeah, we are going to merge a number of areas together and then they will have some multi-member areas and then the pr proportionality will be within that area and then if it is rural area two two communities will be combined you know there is impossible like if they want to combine all of the areas in the north shore with all of the areas in downtown and richmond then every ballot would be 20 choices so it is not as maybe this. more <laughs> So it is not as this that West Vancouver, for example, go for a far, far away area. Not at all. It, nobody has officially said that, and I have not heard such a speculation. Mm -hmm. So the only thing that is that um, um, is North Van, West Van, and Squamish, or North Van, West Van, and what was the other one? So, the, so, so the question is that how far we go? Is the Squamish considered uh, semi-urban or it's considered village? So that is the most thing. Okay. Um, you know. And the, another objection was for the Greens, that what will happen to the Greens if they won't pass that minnow? Is it possible that they will lose their ability to In some areas, elect? yes. In some areas, no. But whatever is, is that, they, they will have a better chance than what they have now. Mm -hmm. Like in, in some areas that they have only, you know, few people liking them, they will have... No, no matter what, System. it's like any other group. Like if there is some people, like if my and my families vote for me, I won't go to the parliament. Okay, uh, the, you have, must have enough number of you know people supporting you. There are there are areas that green candidate is the first candidate. There are areas that nobody likes green candidate. So in those areas, have a, so everything is that should be. Like, did you like that green would go to the parliament from every jurisdiction? So, so yes, in some areas, Green won't go to the parliament. And in some areas, the Liberal won't go to the parliament, as even, even right now in, in Victoria, the Green Party went to the parliament and Liberals didn't, because they didn't have enough vote. Thank you. Okay, sorry. Uh, what do I notice for the final result? The first name of each party is, is uh, selected. Can you show the final result? Uh, yeah, I just might have to step through one more time. So, because people are voting for um, for the parties, they put the numbers in a row. It matters which name is the first. Yes, there is yes, a, it does. In, in preferential voting system, there is a technique of randomization. So every ballot will have a random sort of the candidates. So that, that bias doesn't happen. Yeah. George, uh, Professor, thank you very much for that talk. Very yeah. informative. <laughs> um, historically, once systems like these are adopted, do more parties get formed and join? Like, do, do more people get encouraged to form parties? Or do you have any uh, data where, in other countries, what, what has happened? It will definitely encourage more participation. And one reason that people don't participate and everybody is showing themselves puzzled, there is no puzzle. Let's say if you're living in, in West Van and you're an NDP person, okay? You may think to yourself, okay, what, what, why should I vote? Uh, there is no chance that my vote will count. But if, if all of the areas in North Shore are combined and you are an NDP in North Van, uh, in West Van, you will vote. 
because maybe one of the candidates of the region will go. And the same is in Bernabe. Bernabe has been uh, an NDP bastion, right? So if you're a conservative in, in, in Bernabe, you wouldn't move. Why, why should you bother? Then once this happens, the citizen participation will definitely go higher. And in some countries it has gone higher, in some countries it went higher and then fl flattened again. But there, uh, one reason for people not to vote will go away, which is the fact that they, their ballots will not be counted. Um, um, one thing to consider is, is, is that one thing to consider is that uh, in BC, um, in the last election, there actually were 16 registered parties. 16 registered parties in all of BC. We only hear about three of them. <laughs> Maybe five. Maybe you know about uh, in North Van. You know about the Libertarian Party and the and the Conservative Party. But did you know that there's also a Christian Heritage Party and there's a uh, 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 BC First Party, and there's all these other small parties. So yes, there are small other small parties, but and it encourages those. As you saw in the election, Donald S. Wilson, N. S. Wilson, is a libertarian, and he actually got fairly far through the voting here. So uh, yes, you you probably will see more parties, but that's also a result of people exercising their preference and not necessarily being confined to one big tent party. And you'll see, instead of those coalitions being within a party with uh, like the conservatives having that kind of the tax example you had before, you'll have those two parties who might be out there and have to do that kind of collaboration, collaboration out in the open rather than before the election happens. Yeah, let me add something. Here. Yeah. So the the number of parties will not change because the parties that exist, they exist. Okay? They are already 16 parties. Now, will people vote for their party that they really like? Sure. Will they send a member to the parliament? No. Because if you have a party and 600 people like you, you won't send anyone to the parliament in none of these systems. But the people, but we will know at the end of the election People have revealed their true feelings, and we know that 800 people have this feeling. I, I brought no up, danger is there. I, I brought up the German election results, uh, and uh, Angela Merkel's party won 246 seats, and then the next one won 153 seats, the next one 94 seats, the next one 80 seats, 69 seats, 67 seats. So you might see more parties, smaller parties, start start to win, win, win seats and have a more diverse viewpoint. Yes, but yeah. but the thing that people are worried about is that will every tiny bit of divergent group of people will be in the parliament? No, that's the point. So what what is the the propaganda there is that if we go to proportional we will get a proportion of all the various extreme ideas in the parliament. This is not going to happen because you still have to meet the quota in the region. Maybe if people have other questions, they can come and ask us. Yes. I'm sure people... Thank you very much that you spent this beautiful day with us. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Let me clap for you.